Yay. Hello, everybody. We'll wait for everybody to trickle in here. Thanks for joining us. All right, I see familiar names and non-familiar names. That's good. So some new advocates, welcome. All right. Can I get the ball rolling, Lizzie? Yep, I think I was just kind of waiting for the, the big kind of bunch of people. All right, it looks like just kind of waiting to see when people finish trickling in and it slowed down. All right, I will get started. So good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight on our legislative session preview panel with our legislators. I'm Lizzie Sebring, your Washington State Advocacy Director, and Nancy Chamberlain uh, is with me here. Um, and she is going to be helping with the moderating the Q&A. So if you do have questions, please put those into the Q&A. And uh, when the time comes for questions from the audience, Nancy will appear uh, on your screen uh, to ask questions. And we will get started. So um, I just want to thank everybody again for coming and uh, and in our first half of our uh, legislative session panel, we have Senator Lisa Wellman, uh, Representative Sharon Tomiko Santos, and Representative Yavara. Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Well, thank you, Lizzie. I'm glad to be here. Great. So, and Representative Lowe as well. Oh, he is actually on the next session, the new legislative oh. session. So he'll be joining us um, a little later at 8 p.m. All right. So I just wanted to uh, let you introduce yourselves first, and then we're going to um, ask a couple of questions, and then we'll take some questions from the audience and closing remarks. So that's kind of the format for uh, the first half here this evening. So we'll start with you, uh, Senator Wellman. Okay, um, Senator Lisa Wellman, I am here by the grace of the voters of the 41st Legislative District, which is Mercer Island, parts of Bellevue, Sammamish, uh, Issaquah, and Newcastle. And however, my constituents are the 1.5 million youngsters across the state of Washington, as I chair the Early Learning and K-12 Education Committee in the Senate. Did you want us to do any history now or later? Um, you can do just a little bit, um, you know, with a little background, and then we'll kind of move. Okay. Yeah. I just want to. I just want to follow the rules. Oh. Um, so, uh, formally, way formally, a K twelve uh, education teach a teacher and uh, taught kindergarten, but moved into technology, with, and that was my career. Um, I've headed a number of major uh, corporations in the United States. And um, so I'm very excited to be here at this pivotal time in our education system when we want to get our youngsters ready for that 21st century digital economy that they'll be moving into. And um, so I'm, I'm really pleased to be able to play a part in, in helping that happen. Thank you. All right, uh, Representative Santos. Well, thank you, Lizzie. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Sharon Tomiko Santos. I represent the 37th Legislative District, which is um, Central and Southeast Seattle. I have served in the legislature. This will be my 25th year coming in. All 25 years have been as a member of the House Education Committee. Um, I'm very pleased that uh, my caucus has seen fit to return me to the position of chair in the upcoming biennium. Uh, some fun facts uh, about myself. I am actually a, a true daughter of the district in which I was raised. Um, I attended elementary, junior high, and high school in the 37th legislative district, which means I'm a proud 
graduate of Franklin High School. I am also the daughter of a special education teacher who was in her day, uh, one of the leaders of a very progressive movement at that time that was called mainstreaming. And of course, today we are looking at new ways to incorporate uh, our special education students into our general education classrooms. And I can't help but feel like uh, my mother would be very, very proud to see the work that we are doing in that respect. And finally, I will just note that um, I have uh, 19, uh, 19 grandchildren, all who um, have uh, left the uh, secondary schools of Seattle King County, and I have 24, soon to be 25, great-grandchildren who are in various stages of entering our public schools. Thank you. All right, Representative Ybarra. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alex Ybarra. I'm the state representative for District 13, which at the moment is Lincoln County, most of Grant County, all of Kittitas County, and North Yakima County. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be losing Lincoln because of redistricting, um, but that particular district goes about 200 miles from the Spokane Airport to Suquamish Pass. So my car, I need a new car because it's got so many miles on it that I've been traveling. So, but I was, uh, again, a little bit of history for me, a school board member in my hometown of Quincy for nine years. And after that, when I was uh, appointed as a representative, I was on the education committee. I'm currently the ranking member on the education committee for the house. And um, that's about it. All right, thank you. And again, welcome everybody. So I'm going to start off by asking, uh, since you are um, all seasoned uh, legislators on the uh, education committees on both the House and the Senate side, uh, what um, you know, what can Washington State PTA members expect for from you this next session? And I will start with you, Senator Wellman. Well, uh, today I went over all the bills that we have pre-filed and some of the ones that I haven't filed yet, but that are coming forward. And um, I, I think it's it's wide ranging. Um, I will also say that um, I had the opportunity during our interim um, to not only travel through the, the state visiting various schools as I, I do every year, uh, but I also this year went to Finland and um, had the opportunity to study their education system and also to understand um, more about what's happening with technology in terms of uh, games for education, et cetera. And um, I'm very excited about the things that we already have in, uh, in the, what does it say, already in line to, you know, to move forward, but um, just checking to see that we're going in the right direction. And I think that in Washington State, we are. Uh, one of the, the meetings today, we had a meeting from nine this morning till four o'clock um, for our EOGOAC uh, committee, which is really focused on opportunity, the opportunity gaps, identifying the opportunity gaps. And I'll point out that um, uh, Representative Santos, who was one of the founders of this um, the, this uh, war com committee, working committee, um, which has really been so impactful in the state of, of Washington, identifying where we are not serving all children, each and every child with, with to their greatest uh, capability. And I know Representative Santos and I are very much uh, focused on that. There'll be some uptick on um, special education. I think the time, well, I, I think we've heard from not only the governor, but certainly parents uh, and, and even the federal government who, have, who has come out to say that um, there are more children who they've identified percentage-wise um, within our total population uh, who, who um, come, come forward as being in need of um, special education. Um, and it, it may just mean that they need some assistance or they need some significant intervention. And um, we need to make sure that we provide that. I, I did mean to say that uh, having been to just coming off of, an, of a conference where I met with other educators around the country, uh, our EOGOAC Opportunity Gap Committee is unique, unfortunately unique in the country. Um, I wish others, uh, other states 
had that capability to uh, understand what is what is um, balanced, fair, and balanced, and and really um, are the issues around not appreciating uh, the culture of each and every child. And we and we you know worked on we have worked on that before. Um, so I am bringing back some bills. Let's see, we have bills that address special education, expanding uh, the amount of amounts of money that are going out to special education and how we're doing that. I've been spending a lot of uh, time looking at our some of our basic uh, transportation package, making sure that our uh, both with transportation and in special education and other areas that our school districts have the funds that they need um, to do to do well. We're looking to make sure that um, we have a shortage of teachers. Understanding what's happening with teachers and supporting them, I think, is extremely important. Um, I think that there's going to be, uh, of course, I'm always interested in computer science and making sure that um, that all of our children have access to that because I think it's so important. And now, of course, having uh, the devices that they have uh, available to them um, is, is really critical. Uh, but it also allows them to participate in other things. I think we're going to try to um, develop an eSports um, uh, program across the state, which I think is going to be very exciting. And, um, and that's just a few of the things I don't want to take all the time because I'm sure that there are many questions. Those are some of just some of the things, you know, that I'm thinking of. Um, I had a meeting today on our transportation package and, you know, it sounds, it sounds like it shouldn't be such a big deal, but, but making sure that the costs, the, the costs of various things that our school districts have to take on um, are being paid for, that education is our paramount duty. And so it really is important that we take care of paying for all of education. Transportation is one thing, and making sure that kids have a, a place to get a good meal can be another thing. So those are some of the things I think you'll see. Thank you. Representative Santos? Well, thank you, Lizzie, for that question. Um, I'm just coming off of uh, the House Democratic Caucus advance because, of course, Democrats don't retreat, we advance. Um, but uh, and during that period of, of our gathering, um, we engaged in a process of priority setting and of um, identifying where are uh, the caucus uh, interests uh, for a variety of different uh, areas, including, of course, education. And so I'm very, very proud to say that what, what, one of the things that you can expect from House Democrats is uh, these three values. We are focusing on equity, we're focusing on sustainability, and we are focusing on uh, shared prosperity. Um, and so how did that then um, make itself visible uh, in the issues that we identified in education? Well, uh, let me just share with you a few of the buckets and then uh, give you a hint at what might appear in some of those buckets. Um, without question, the first uh, bucket that came up uh, as a high priority for virtually every House Democrat was education funding. And of course, that comes um, uh, that covers the waterfront from uh, special education funding, where many of us uh, definitely support the uh, PTSA position of removing the cap. We know that's not what the governor did. We'll see where we end up uh, during the legislative session. But it also includes issues such as regionalization, because we know that, for example, uh, my district and Representative Ibarra's district are very, very different in terms of uh, the capacity of our local districts to support uh, schools. So if we believe in local control, we have to ensure that the capacity of our local districts to support education in their communities is equalized um, and that we are able to support uh, our educators regardless of where they live and regardless of where our students live. Another big bucket, and you heard um, 
uh, Senator Wellman already uh, touched on this, is the issue of the workforce shortage. Now, the workforce shortage touches virtually every aspect of our economy, whether we're talking about our, um, our healthcare clinics and hospitals, uh, whether we are talking about our public servants, uh, or whether we are talking about our educators. So um, really focusing in on how do we recruit and retain uh, a highly effective uh, educational workforce is very, very important to us. But as important to us, we want to make sure that we are recruiting and retaining educators that have um, uh, knowledge uh, and skills to work with a very, very diverse student population. Um, another area that we are really taking a look at is the issue, and this is ongoing, uh, the issue of school safety as well as uh, student uh, well-being. Um, and again, this is a little bit of a waterfront bucket. It, it includes everything from re-looking at our harassment, intimidation, and bullying practices to uh, issues around just proportionate discipline and whether or not um, we have adequate training uh, and policies in place to um, ensure that our students' well-being is taken care of and that the safety of every individual uh, in our schools is first and foremost in mind. Um, the second to the last bucket is what I'm going to call our Washington Integrated Student Support um, bucket. Uh, this is where we are taking a look, and again, uh, Senator Wellman and I, and of course, Repre uh, Representative Ibarra as well, have all been engaged in uh, what we are identifying as mastery-based education in the state of Washington, or mastery-based learning. Uh, it, it is a very different way of uh, making sure that we are reaching, as the Senator pointed out, each and every child, because if you have more than one child, you know <laughs> that every child child is very different. Every child has their own unique strengths, but as well, they have their own unique challenges. And so uh, a cookie cutter approach in the way of educating these students is not helping most of our students. So integrated student supports actually tries to identify the unique characteristics, uh, strengths and challenges of our students. Uh, but it also identifies that some of our students may need uh, extra Say, for example, language access supports. You can't learn if you can't understand the lesson that's being taught. Others of our students may be um, homeless, may be um, uh, experiencing uh, trauma. And one of the things that we can help is make sure that they get fully fed. And so there will be a universal meal uh, proposal that comes through. Finally, I wanna talk about just innovation in general. I've already referenced uh, mastery-based learning, but I do wanna talk about two other things. Uh, one is um, we are really focusing on uh, work integrated learning, and that is not just reserving it for the secondary schools, but again, I'm very uh, happy to have uh, Representative Ibarra's support on looking at uh, a more robust and comprehensive work integrated learning uh, approach from kindergarten through the 12th grade. Um, I know he will be coming forward uh, with a regional apprenticeship program uh, proposal. I'll let him talk about that, but I will end with, uh, we will be coming around for, I think this will be the fourth time uh, on expanding uh, graduation pathways because we still have too many students who are falling through the cracks and not able to um, demonstrate in accordance with what the state has established that they know um, that they can demonstrate their knowledge and their skills as we have set them out only because we haven't provided them with, with a pathway. So we're gonna correct that. And I'll leave it right there and um, turn it to my ranking member. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Representative uh, and Senator as well. So after the conversation or the comments that were made by the, the two of you, I, I always knew this, but I always knew that we are all on the same page. And it's always for the kids. And no matter how we approach it, with what words, what comments, what bills, uh, whatever approach it is, that's what we're here for is for the kids. We want them all to succeed to be great citizens in our country 
and how we get there. That's the, that's the only thing we argue about is how do we get to the final um, outcome, which is make sure our kids do the best they can while they're in K-12. And so that so we're really on board there. It's just a matter of how do we get there? So again, I think many of the things that uh, I was going to say have already been said, so I'll try not to duplicate anything. But uh, something that President of Santos mentioned was the pre-apprenticeship bill. And that's something that uh, we had worked last year and uh, didn't pass that last year. So this year we're going to give the second uh, second effort to make that pass. And basically it's for workforce. It's for those kids that maybe don't want to go to college and be a doctor or a lawyer. Maybe they want to be a carpenter or a welder or an electrician, uh, which are wonderful jobs for kids to have. And what we're trying to do is make sure that they have a particular pathway that they want to do, not that the parents want to tell them to do or the schools want them to do to get a four-year degree or get, get a PhD. If they want to be a carpenter, if they want to be a, you know, just somebody that pours cement, that's a wonderful job that pays well. And what we want to do is make sure we give them a pathway to get to that thing. And, and so the pre-apprenticeship bill was is something that we're going to start. Uh, I'm working on it right now. Um, and we're trying to work with the unions, work with our local industries, make sure that they that we put the right project or program in place so those kids, as soon as they leave high school, they can step into a pre-apprenticeship while they leave, as they leave school or a, or a certificate program that they might want to approach first. And so that's why I'm working on really hard at the moment. And I have a lot of support from both sides of the aisle. And I think that, again, this is great for all kids. So that's what, I, what I'm kind of looking at. Another thing that didn't get pointed out too much was capital funding. So a lot of school districts um, need, uh, can't pass bonds. So we're trying to figure out a, a better approach to um, finance um, school districts that can't pass bonds. Uh, some very small ones that don't have a uh, the amount of uh, uh, infrastructure to pay for those things or amount of taxes to pay for those things. And so we're trying to figure out how to come up with a a source of funding to make those school districts get what uh, the kids need, which is better facilities, better things that they need in order to uh, graduate from high school with the best education they can. So that's another big thing. And the great thing is to, uh, Representative Santos and I work on many of these uh, of these uh, committees as well as Senator Wellman. We work together, uh, maybe not together all the time, but we're always working on the same committees, trying to get to the same place. Uh, a lot of special ed, really getting a lot of uh, over in central Washington, where I live, and I kind of put my two cents there is uh, central Washington is very unique from Western Washington, not better, not worse, but just different. And so I just always advocate for the Eastern Washington folks who I represent to make sure that uh, their voice is heard uh, while we pass these bills and make sure that those things are done. And the great thing is I think Senator Wellman and Representative Santos do a great job of listening and understanding that uh, not everything in Seattle or Bellevue or Olympia is the same as the rest of the state. So uh, the great thing is that they're great listeners and uh, great helpers to accomplish some things I want to accomplish in Eastern Washington. Uh, let me see some other things. Uh, let's see. You know, a little bit about transportation. Again, Eastern Washington, uh, at least my school district in Quincy, you would think wouldn't have a lot of miles of travel with their buses, but we have the most miles traveled on our buses for our students in of every school district in the state. We put more miles on our buses, yet we get paid less than most school districts, but we have just because of the amount of kids we have. And so what I want to do is make sure that every school district gets the same amount of funding for their transportation, for the need of transportation, not how many miles you put in there, or maybe it should be how many miles you put in there, but we're trying to figure out what the right approach is, but we want to make sure that the funding is available for all transportation for all the kids, no matter the school district and no matter where you live. Uh, and that, you know, is about it. Going to be working hard on foster kids. Just heard a ton of information from a group uh, in Moses Lake, Washington, just yesterday, I think. And they told me everything about all the things that the foster kids in our state need and all of the things that, uh, you know, they're falling behind on. And I want to make sure that we start looking at that uh, at that issue and making sure we cover all kids. And again, like I said earlier, we're here for all kids, not just some kids. 
it's for all kids. And I think the three of us believe that. And I think most of our education committees believe that we're here for all kids. And, and that's what we're all about, I think. Thank you. All right. So the next uh, question, this year, uh, Washington State PTA, we just voted on a new legislative platform. And so our top five priorities, I'm just going to briefly uh, mention them again here, um, is addressing the student mental health crisis, addressing critical gaps in education funding, preventing and reducing gun violence and suicide, addressing funding, inclusion, and supports in special education, and building and maintaining safer school facilities. So uh, just to ask you, the three of you, uh, how, does your, how do your caucus priorities kind of align with our top five priorities? And I will start with you, uh, Representative Santos. Yeah, thank you. Um, again, I, I think they uh, align very, very well, uh, as uh, just to repeat, uh, the value statements that the House Democrats are focusing in on are equity, on uh, sustainability, and uh, finally shared prosperity. And uh, as I look at your priorities for the Washington State PTSA, I see those very same values resonating that when you talk about addressing critical gaps in education funding, for example, what you're really trying to address is the fact that uh, not all of our districts, uh, again, have the same capacity. Uh, not all of our students are receiving uh, equitable uh, education services so that they can all reach to the same goal. When we talk about making sure uh, that we prevent and reduce the um, uh, violence and uh, suicide ideation in our schools, I think one of the things that we're really talking about is the idea that our students have lost hope. I just have to pause there for a moment because I think that that is such a, it is such a uh, pregnant thought that our students as young as eight years old have lost hope. How could that be? And um, so when we talk about preventing and reducing gun violence and suicide, we do need to get at the first issue that you've identified, which is addressing the student mental health crisis. Those two things have to go hand in hand. And we do have several bills uh, that uh, will be coming forward to both provide training for uh, educators, as well as training for students uh, to be peer mediators. Um, and then taking a look at some of the data that exists, but has not been necessarily parlayed into uh, an actionable policy. Uh, we really need to get our arms around that. So um, when we talk about um, the idea of uh, inclusion, special supports and education, as well as uh, building and maintaining safer school facilities, I think as Representative Ibarra indicated, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican, when it comes right down to it, everyone on the House Education Committee, and I'm sure that Senator Wel Wellman would say the same about her committee, but everyone on my committee cares about the well-being of the students uh, while they are in our charge. And that means that we also have to take care of the adults who are in the building, whom we have asked to do so much during this most um, unimaginable time uh, in our global history. That's what I think is really the, the vision of shared prosperity and sustainability. Thank you. Uh, Representative Ibarra. Sure. So one of the things you pointed out was school safety. And uh, I talked earlier about capital funding. And one of the things that I see in capital funding is, you know, a lot, we have a lot of old buildings in our schools and uh, there's no bonds that could get, get passed in certain school districts in order to, uh, for instance, put in a single uh, a single location where kids can come in one way and that's the only way they can do it. Most school districts have to build a new en entryway for every one of their schools and that costs millions of dollars. And so because of that, uh, what we're trying to do is come up with some funding for some school districts that can't 
uh, come up with those funds to, to get that uh, done. Um, again, mostly for school safety, make sure our kids are safe at all times. Um, probably could add a lot more, but I'll just leave it at safe, school safety at, at the moment. Thank you. Senator Wellman. Yeah, well, I, I, you've heard some really good um, descriptions of, of many of the things that we're all thinking about. Um, I'm going to go a little off and, and talk about um, my background is as after education um, is as a systems developer and um, taking that, I think it's really important for us to create the system that will deliver the benefits that we all want our children to have. And when you look at that, there are many, many different touch points that we really have to address. You've heard some of them in terms of the quality of the school itself, the physical building being a safe place, as well as um, making sure that, um, that the students have access to supports for mental health, whether it's counselors, social workers, um, psychologists, et cetera. Um, there, there are a lot of things, you know, kind of that we're learning about the system. Um, so I want, I really want to talk to that because we're really, I, I love the fact that in, in the Senate, we get to look at early learning through K through 12 and essentially we're cradle to career as we talk about it, which I think is, it, it enables us to see the continuum of, of supports. We know that in, in special education, how very critical early intervention is. And, and that is one of the mandates that we have as a state that we make sure that we, we are able to address the educational needs even of, of uh, young, young children, uh, babies, and start to intervene where there are issues. And we know that that will produce a much better outcome. Um, we also are looking at, I'm looking at, uh, as Representative Ibarra talked about, uh, the pre-apprenticeship program. We are lucky in the state, I think, to have some a number of skill centers um, that are serving our school districts. Um, those skill centers are all over prescribed. There are many, many children who would like to be able to go to a school center, but unfortunately they're, they're filled to capacity. Um, so looking at skill centers and, and trying to expand their capabilities, I think are one of the things that, you know, that we're looking at now, making sure that for instance, while we have school buses, our transportation package, we're looking at that, creating a new system to make sure that we're paying for the cost of transportation, which is part of general education, making sure that our skill centers are receiving funding for transportation as well, because many of those children, if not all of them, are spending time in one school and then going to a skill center for part of the day. I also want to talk about really looking at um, the, the type of pre-apprenticeship programs and, and the skills that are learned in skill centers and understand that it's not one system that's up here for academics going to college and another system that's down here for skill center kids, not at all. Um, what we have is a very blended system, a braided system where you may start off as, as a, a representative Ibarra alluded to, you may start off because you're fascinated, you wanna be a, a contractor, but maybe after five or 10 years, you want to own a company and, and build houses or build buildings or become an architect. We want to develop a system that enables you to go on to get what you need. And we're very fortunate in the state of Washington to have a very robust and um, dynamic uh, community college system, career and technical college system. And uh, we want to make sure that our systems blend together. One, one thing I think that, that's very important with the things that we're talking about, about the changes that we're looking about, mastery-based education, um, looking using technology further, um, we're looking at another data point, which is what is happening in our prep schools to make sure that the teachers who are the next great, the next evolution of teachers coming through our prep schools, ready to be teachers, really have all that they need. So are they learning to use synchronous and asynchronous? Are they able to do uh, online education as well as more traditional education that you see you know, in other ways? Um, do we have teachers who are representatives, uh, represented of, of all the different 
students that they may encounter. Most of our teachers are white women. Um, and um, it really, that's, that's who people see, but making sure that we really bring people of all ethnicities in so that, um, that students see themselves as, as succeeding and see themselves you know, in the classroom or as the principal, as the superintendent of schools or whatever. I think that that's really important. Uh, we attended um, uh, a, we had a three-day tribal education summit recently that, that I intended. And the, the, um, the report out from the work that was done there by tribal members who were reporting back to the three of us and all of, of their senators and representatives about their needs. It's very clear that when you as a student are seen by your teacher as to your background, your culture, and, and appreciated for all of that, students do much, much better. And so we're, we're looking at that as well. Finally, I'm working on, we have, um, you know, the numbers are just the numbers and, and there's, a, there's if, if we had all the money in the world, it would be one thing, but we don't. So the reality is that in terms of our counselors, um, the people who work with students in terms of helping them develop their careers, we have a limited number. The caseload is about 400 to one. And so in order to support that, we have been, we have something called a high school and beyond plan. Um, I have found it to be somewhat um, anemic to say the least. And so I'm looking at developing a way for us to look at a, a, a high school and beyond plan that is rich and informative and helps the student move forward. I love the fact that Representative Santos always says that we ask children when they're young, what do they want to be when they grow up? And then we stop asking. And we need to constantly ask and give them opportunities to explore and, and see what, what the opportunities are out there that they may be passionate about and excited about. And I think that you know the fact that we say continuously um, that the job that this the kindergarten teach the kindergarten child may have is hasn't been invented yet. Um, so it's really important that we constantly look at what they're interested in and how can we support them going forward. Um, so that's, I think, hopefully I've addressed some of the things that you asked about. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, we've got some questions from the audience and I'm going to have Nancy uh, ask them. And then uh, just so you know, uh, Representative Yabari, you're going to be the first one to answer. <laughs> All right. Um, we have a few questions. I know we're we're running low on time, so um, make them easy questions. I'm good. The one on funding, then we better leave to last. Um, <laughs> um, actually, Nancy, I was going to suggest maybe you start with that question. Okay. All right. Um, the scuttlebutt here, I guess. The uh, number of items you all have discussed uh, involve additional funding. Uh, is there any sense yet where the funding would come from? Is there any form of new or increased state revenue under consideration this session? Well, since I'm answering first, I could just say that the other side of the aisle usually has those purse strings and do not have a lot of input into that. Um, but if it were up to me, mm -hmm. I would put a little money into uh, trying to get teachers of color or, te or teachers that uh, know a different language into our school districts, for instance, in dual dual language programs that we're pushing really hard for. Been on the committee for a little while. It costs a lot of money in order to get those teachers um, to the place where we need them to do dual language across the state. In Eastern Washington, I have probably about fifty percent of my kids are dual language kids. They can only speak Spanish, um, and so we need those dual language teachers. So we've got a what's called a bilingual education initiative at the moment. It's a pilot that I really wanna push hard and put the money to there. And it, all it does is just take uh, high school kids that are already bilingual because of their backgrounds, uh, that take them through the teacher programs at the uh, community colleges and into the four years, and then we can pay off their loans while they, while, while they come home and teach in their native language where most of them speak that same language. And we can start those, start getting those uh, teachers that speak those native languages uh, to to the kids that need them. And so that's a very small thing. 
about funding, but that's something that I really want to push a little bit of funding toward. Thank you. Uh, Senator Wellman. Uh, well, to answer your question, I will say that we're, you've got three people here who will go after every penny that we can wring out of, out of the uh, legislature. Um, and, and one of the things that I'm very proud of, and as I said, I was just at another conference uh, and, and got to speak to other states. We are a triple A rating of, with Moody's for our financial management in the state of Washington. We do a balanced budget. We do a four-year lookout. And it really is dependent upon, um, you know, as, as you as you know, it's dependent upon the revenue streams that that, that we have established. But education is our primary, uh, is our paramount duty, according to our constitution. And that gives us a nice platform to fight for education and the education needs of our students, our, our schools, as, as, and our teachers, as well as all the other employees who support um, our school system. So um, I think that, that we are there fighting for you and whatever we can do. Um, you've heard many of the things that we need to put money into. We're fighting for that and we'll... We'll see how it comes out. All right, thank you. Representative Santos. Well, thank you, Lizzie. Um, I'm very pleased to uh, note that I'm returning uh, to the House Finance Committee after a 10 year long hiatus. Uh, I had served on the Finance Committee for 15 years, but I point this out only because um, I will have to admit to your audience tonight that since this is a returning assignment for me, I'm not as familiar with what are the current legislative uh, revenue proposals that are under consideration. I can say this. Um, uh, Again, as of the uh, advance that I just attended, uh, one of the things that people are contemplating is property tax reform. Again, it goes to that issue around shared prosperity and equity. Um, I don't know the details of that, but if we want to make sure that Eastern Washington and Western Washington advance together, uh, the issue around property tax reform is going to be a very rich and I'm sure robust conversation. Again, I don't know what the details are. The second thing that I think we could agree on, whether we are a uh, Democrat or Republican, is that small businesses are the lifeblood of our economy. And small businesses are unfortunately the businesses that are getting the hugest whack uh, when it comes to paying taxes because our, of our very, very backward uh, B&O uh, uh, tax uh, approach on gross receipts. Um, so I, I understand that there are some proposals around B&O tax reform as well, which I would welcome. Uh, but let me let, land on the one thing that I absolutely do know, um, and it's not about taxes at all. It is about spending our existing education budget in a smarter and more effective way. Right now, the education budget, just like many other pieces of the budget, are filled with the uh, sort of the um, pork uh, of every 147 legislators, but you have to also mu multiply that by the number of years uh, that any particular proviso has been existing in that budget, even though that legislator may be long gone. So I think that a real careful review of how and where we're spending our education dollars to make sure that they are still doing what we want them to do and they are doing it in the most effective way is another way to get um, some good amount of money, maybe not huge amounts of money, but I think we can bring out some good amounts of money. All right, thank you. And then um, we're going to ask our next question, and I'm just going to ask you, in the interest of time, to keep the your okay. answers brief, please. Um, all right, go ahead, Nancy. And then that will the next question will start with Senator Wellman. Okay. Um, and this question is about mastery based learning, which I know is has been mentioned before. Um, the question is specific, um, a little bit drills down a little bit, but you can answer uh, about your feelings on mastery based learning. It has many appealing characteristics for many different groups of students. Uh, how do you think mastery based learning for highly capable students uh, enables them to stretch beyond the curriculum? 
Well, I think I think actually the whole idea of um, highly capable students and mastery based are actually um, it, it, there's there's really beautiful alignment because the ch uh, each and every child gets what they need when they need it. So understanding the needs of our highly capable students is essential. In, in moving forward with a mastery based program, it's part of it. So when you have, you know, a fourth grader who's doing, uh, I don't know, abstract math, uh, your physics, whatever, they should be getting and, and getting a chance to, you know, engage in activities that support the level of their understanding. I'm an experiential learner. I'm somebody who who learns best by doing. And um, mastery based is very often has that that component in it. It is not just hearing from a teacher. It is engaging in activities that excite you and enable you to use your talents and learn to do things through that. Thank you, Representative Santos. I, I couldn't agree more with everything that Senator Wellman said. I will um, perhaps only add on to this by saying um, the essential concept behind mastery-based learning is that you're focusing in on the standards of learning and every student is allowed to go as fast or at a more deliberate pace as he or she or they may need. Um, I believe the beauty in mastery-based learning is that we can finally get rid of all of the labels that separate and segregate our students. That's one thing. The last thing I will say uh, about um, mastery-based learning uh, is that, um, you know, in our current system, uh, the reason we have to have a highly capable program is because we have built and have only added on to a factory-based industrial model of educating where every student has to learn at the same pace, the exact same content, content and with the expectation that they're going to exit uh, with the same level of learning. Well, we all know nothing can be further than the truth, but what that really means is that for, so we're absolutely designed to create an education system today that aims at the middle. So if you are uh, a more advanced learner, you will always be bored. So, and if this pace is too rigorous for you, then you will always be behind. So there's nothing worse than the system that we have in place for each and every learner. Thank you. Uh, Representative Ibarra. Well, I'm glad I'm last because I'm the last to buy into mastery-based learning. As the senator and representative know, um, I, I, you know, don't understand what it's all about. And 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 this is maybe a year ago. And so what I asked uh, to do is to get on the mastery-based learning technical group. And so I've been on it for about six months, trying to understand what this is all about, why it makes sense to put in our school districts. And so I'm. I'm coming along. I'm coming along slowly, but I'm I'm cautious with it. Um, I want to make sure that if we do bring mastery-based learning into the school, into the schools, that it makes a lot of sense for all the kids. Um, not quite there yet, so I need a lot more talking to from the senator and from the representative to to teach me um, what I don't know. And and uh, if at the end that mastery-based learning is the is the way to go for some kids, then we should do it. Um, but I'm, so I'm not going to say no, but I am learning as I go. So. Thank you. All right. I'm going to uh, let you give some closing remarks here. And again, just for uh, the time, just please keep them brief. And I will actually start with you, uh, Representative Ybarra. Well, that's easy. First thing I said was it's for the kids. And at the end of the day, Senator Wallman, uh, uh, Representative Santos, we all want the same things for the kids. And no matter how we get there, uh, their way, my way, however we do it, we just want to make sure what's best for kids, the best outcome for our kids is what we're looking for at the end of the day. So that's what I'm, what, what I'm all about. Thank you. All right, uh, Representative Santos. Well, thank you. Uh, let me just say uh, here, here to Representative Ibarra's statement, it is for each and every student, but I need to emphasize 
each and every student. That means not just my kids. That doesn't mean just the kids in my neighborhood or just the kids in my community. It is for every student in the state of Washington that Senator Wellman represents, those 1.5 million students. Um, and we know that each one is unique. And so as long as we all buy into that big vision that it's about all of our kids or each and every single one of them and meeting them where they are, then I predict we will have great success during the 2023 legislative session. And I look forward to seeing all of you there. Thank you. And Senator Wellman to close it out. Well, I'll close it out with a very personal uh, statement and that is how blessed I feel to be in the state of Washington, working in this job and getting to be here at a really pivotal moment for our nation, for our state, and for our, our youngsters in terms of their education. Uh, the, the learned experience that I have uh, in, in my career and seeing changes in, in, you know, in technology, in jobs, in, in learning, et cetera, um, I, I think has put me, I feel, in the right place at the right time. And, and the fact that I get to do this and make a difference in, in the lives of our children and families um, is just such a blessing in my life. So thank you all. And, and I do appreciate um, the opportunities that we have, we three have, to really move forward um, for the state of Washington and each and every child. Thank you. Well, I would like to say thank you um, on behalf of Washington State PTA, Senator Wellman, Representative Santos, and Representative Yabara for taking the time to share with our uh, membership here this evening uh, your thoughts about the upcoming session and what the priorities are for you and how they align with our priorities. So um, that is our, going to conclude the first part of our legislative panel preview. And um, we're going to transition um, and then begin with some of our new legislators that will be uh, just starting their terms in January and uh, welcoming them to uh, the to introduce them to a little bit about Washington State PTA. So again, thank you um, and have a good evening, uh, Senator Wellman, Representative Yavara, and Representative Santos. And thank you, uh, the audience. I hope that you enjoyed that first part of our session and we are going to uh, wait for uh, all of our new legislators to join uh, and then we'll start at eight o'clock. So take a stretch break, everybody. Okay, so thank you, everybody. Um, we are um, waiting on, we're gonna get started. Uh, because we do have Representative-elect Sam uh, Lowe here with us. And then uh, we have a couple other new members coming. Uh, they are running a little bit behind, so they will just uh, jump in when we uh, see them, or they will just join us when we see them uh, get on the Zoom. Uh, Representative-elect Lowe, I just wanted to confirm that we are going to be recording. Is that okay with you? Oh, of course, yeah. Okay, just then that way um, we can share this with some of our members who were not able to attend tonight. So um, thank you for coming and I appreciate your time tonight. Um, I am um, the Lizzie Sebring, the Washington State uh, PTA Advocacy Director. And then Nancy Chamberlain is our president and she'll be the one kind of asking questions. There's Nancy right there uh, when we get to that. And then uh, audience, I just wanted to remind you, uh, please uh, put your questions in the Q&A. We are going to capture all the questions at the end of the night. Uh, so then those questions that we weren't able to get to, we can uh, try to see if we can get those answered at a later time and then share those out with you. Hey, Lizzie, just want to let you know that uh, Representative Lex Street is uh, trying to get on and he will be in momentarily. And Senator Benke, I don't know if you mentioned this, but uh, should be joining uh, in another five minutes or so. He was in a good roads meeting, so he's he's transitioning. <laughs> okay, no problem. 
And then we just, I wanted to also mention to the audience that uh, uh, <clears throat> Senator-elect uh, Claudia Kaufman, she was supposed to come tonight. Unfortunately, she um, was not able to join us due to illness, but I did want to recognize that she um, was planning to originally be uh, participating with us this evening. All right, so uh, Representative Elect uh, Low, we um, we're going to just start out with maybe introductions, and then we'll let the others jump on and introduce themselves. So, if you can just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, some maybe some interesting facts, if you um, have been a PTA member or you are a PTA member. Well, good evening. Thanks for having me on tonight. I, I really appreciate the invitation, and uh, I look forward to. Uh, a fun evening uh, with everyone tonight. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, when I graduated college, uh, I taught third and fourth grade. Uh, so I have a little bit of a teaching background. Uh, I think it was more for my basketball skills because I played basketball in college and I think the high school team needed a coach. Uh, so I think it was more that for that than uh, it was about my teaching abilities. Uh, I do have a master's degree in organizational leadership. Uh, my wife, Mariah, uh, she graduated from the University of Washington. Uh, she was a DNA scientist uh, with the State Patrol for about 15 years. Uh, we're, we're strong believers in education. Uh, I have five kids. And, uh, you know, with five kids, I've learned that there's five different learning styles or more. So every kid is different. Uh, the unique thing about uh, my kids uh, my oldest has been a school teacher. Uh, this is her third year. Uh, she has a master's degree in English. Uh, my second oldest, this is his first year of teaching. Uh, my third, uh, she's at Grand Canyon University and she's in her final year. Uh, she wants to be a teacher. Uh, and so we're excited about that. Uh, kid number four, uh, he is, uh, uh, a salesman at one of our local dealerships. Uh, he loves it. He thinks it's the uh, greatest thing for him. And then my youngest is uh, doing Running Start. Uh, all my kids have done Running Start at some point. And uh, my youngest, if I had to pick any one of my five kids that would be a school teacher, I would pick my youngest as a school teacher. Uh, straight A's, loves school, loves the whole thing. Um, he hasn't decided what he wants to do. I don't pressure my kids. I let my kids make their own decisions. And, but if I had to pick a school teacher, it's probably going to be him. So again, we're real strong on education, uh, real strong on each kid being treated differently. Uh, each kid's unique. Uh, our kids have been in public school. They've been in private school. They've done homeschool. And again, it depends on each student. So uh, that's just a little bit about us and our family. And I look forward to uh, this event tonight and and to to answer questions and, and talk about the issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to welcome Representative Elect Chapalo Street. Uh, welcome. We are just doing introductions. So if you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself, some interesting facts, and um, if you've ever been a PTA member. That would be great. Thank you. I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Representative Elect Chapala Street. I'm going to be representing the 37th LD, which is Southeast, Southeast Seattle. Um, so if you divided Seattle up into sort of a quadrant, it would be that southeastern chunk of the city. Um, some interesting things about me. Uh, my day job, I work at Microsoft for the Chief Technology Officer. Um, I get to advise our executives on emerging technology. Um, and one of my campaign messages that I think is really important to have legislators who understand technology is changing our communities and our region. And I think we have to make sure that our kids are prepared um, to take part in that industry if they want to. And I know that education has been huge in my life and it's why I'm where I am today. Um, so I want to make sure that all of our kids have that opportunity to be involved in um, get the best education, specifically public schools for me. That's been my um, trajectory through um, elementary, junior high and high school for all public schools. And so making sure that all of our kids have opportunity to get the best education is really important to me. 
Um, a fun fact is that I used to be a professional soccer referee. Um, so that was a whole other side of my life um, and afforded me many interesting experiences. And yeah, I'm happy to be here with represent representative elect low as well we had a chance to meet each other during bipartisan orientation and it was great to get, have a chance to chat with him as well and looking forward to chatting with everyone today thank you good to, good to see you chuck paulo hey i don't know who won the world cup today do you know who won today oh for sure uh, argentina is going to be playing france in the final on sunday awesome thanks so much i've been in meetings all day sorry <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to start with uh, a question. And so the format is just gonna be, I'm gonna ask a few questions. We're gonna take some questions from the audience and then let you do some closing remarks. So my first question is what are the top, uh, what are your top three priorities for this session? And I will start with you, uh, Representative Lux Street. Sure. So one of the first things is I would love, to, I got appointed to the finance committee and I'll be the vice chair on that. Um, and as part of that, I'd like to revise our tax code, both to make sure that uh, individuals and businesses pay their fair share. So I think we can do a bunch of things around our B&O tax to make sure that um, we're setting our small businesses up for success. Um, and I think we can also do some stuff around progressive revenue um, to make sure that wealthy individuals pay their fair share. Uh, and one of the places that we need to direct that money is towards our school system and making sure that our school system is funded for kids with special education needs um, and just well fully funded in general. Um, so those so tax reform is one that's high on my list. I would also like to investigate public banks in terms of making sure that um, how we, when we collect tax revenue that we can then as a state use that before we um, before we send it out in different appropriations. Uh, right now we send it to private banks and then pay fees for the usage of that. If we could keep that within the state, then we could better use our money because whenever we take a taxpayer dollar, we need to make sure that we use it as well as possible. And if we can find optimizations by having a state bank um, to look after that money, I think we can use our tax dollars even more wisely. Um, so those would be two things that are near and dear to my heart. And then, the other thing about having people who understand technology in the legislature is that data privacy is a major issue for us all. We're seeing uh, that technology has great potential to make our lives easier, but it has potential to roll back some of our rights as well. And given the recent Supreme Court decision with Roe, I'd like to make sure that um, data privacy applies first for reproductive rights um, so that we don't have um, corporations or law enforcement going after folks searching for abortions and that people's data is protected. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Representative Lutz Lowe. Well, I have not received my committee assignments yet. I, I know on the other side of the aisle they have. And so congratulations, Chapalo, on your committees. And I think I'll hear tomorrow or by Friday at the latest on, on my committees. Uh, obviously, I have uh, some some priorities. Uh, Transportation is a huge uh, priority in my legislative district, but I'd really like to talk about my kind of top three educational uh, priorities. Uh, I really want to see uh, more funding for special education. I think, uh, uh, you know, I, as I've talked with some of our sc local school board members, um, the cap at, on special education has made it very difficult uh, for some. So I really want to uh, try to work on that this session. Um, the other thing is uh, funding students. And uh, I'm a big proponent. I, I'm sure some are different than I am, but I believe uh, that the money should follow the student. I'm, I'm a big proponent of charter schools and alternative education. Uh, I'm not anti-public school. Uh, my wife and I both graduated from public school. But again, I think it's about each student and what their specific needs are. and 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 I found with my own kids, every every child's different, and I think that comes a lot down to a school transparency and being transparent with parents and having parents more involved in education. Uh, sometimes I feel like schools try to keep parents um, kind of at arm's length, and I, and I don't think that's fair to the student, and, and I don't think it's fair to our families. And so, uh, those are big priorities. And the last one I would say is. Uh, apprenticeship programs. Uh, we've done it here in Snohomish County. Uh, Marysville Pilchuck uh, 
high school, uh, working with apprenticeship uh, stuff. And I, I think apprenticeship programs is the way to go. Uh, four of my kids went to college, uh, but one of them uh, wanted to go a different path. And uh, so I think uh, giving kids different options, lots of options, and not doing the one size fits all. So those are kind of my priorities as I get into the legislative session this year. Thank you so much. And um, before I move on, uh, Representative-elect uh, Street and welcome Senator-elect uh, Banky. I just wanted to confirm, I already asked uh, Representative-elect Lowe that we are recording. Is that okay with you? Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, so I want to say welcome, uh, Senator-elect Banky, and I know that you are currently a representative right now, but uh, switching over to the Senate in the next session. Um, we just wanted to, uh, we have already done introductions, so I'm going to give you a chance to do um, an introduction about yourself, uh, some facts, uh, anything you want to share with us. And then uh, the first question that we did ask was, what are your top three priorities uh, for the upcoming session and what committees will you be serving on? Oh, well, first off, thank you very much for having us because it always means a lot to serve community where I grew up. So I am a senator elect and I tell people I entered the transfer portal from the House to the Senate, uh, trying to get my name, you know, the NIL stuff working. It doesn't work with a last name like mine. So I'm still struggling with some of that stuff. But uh, I grew up in Kennewick, uh, was raised by an educator and a scientist in the nuclear field. So uh, I come from a different diverse background who uh, one uh, that believes in science and as well as reading and means a lot to me as I'm currently a professor at Columbia Basin College in my day job. Um, so I grew up, I went to Eastern Washington University, couldn't afford college. So like any other students, you know, had to earn our way through it. I joined the Army ROTC program, ended up earning the uh, top cadet out of the state of Washington to go to flight school, uh, became uh, one of the top pilots during Desert Storm and then served in uh, various different command leadership positions throughout the military, 40 different countries, moved 27 times in 22 years, uh, ended up as a Lieutenant Colonel serving in the Pentagon before I ended up getting out when my wife said she'd rather be back in the real Washington state or the right Washington. Uh, so we moved back here. Um, I've known my wife since she was 12 and I was 14. We've been married 32 years, really proud of that. Had two grown boys who've gone off to do physics and cybersecurity in their profession as well. Uh, when I got out of the military at 11, yeah, 11 years ago now, um, was asked to run for city council while I actually was transitioning from working out at a nuclear power plant and then the hydroelectric dam. So I know a lot about energy. So that's one of my priorities. My second one is education as a college professor. Means a lot when you talk to students about childcare, about uh, COVID, about uh, things that are going on in education in our systems today. And then uh, my third one really is, I was the ranking member on community economic development with uh, Representative Ryu. We did a lot to help our communities and the economic impacts they've had from COVID the last couple of years. So those are kind of my three priorities and a little bit about myself all wrapped into one. Does that work for you? <laughs> Thanks, it Lizzie. Does. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. All right, uh, so I'm going to ask um, <clears throat> our top, so Washington State PTA, we just uh, voted on our new legislative platform. And so our top five uh, priorities, I'm gonna just briefly mention them here, addressing the student mental health crisis, addressing critical gaps in education funding, preventing and reducing gun violence and suicide, adjusting funding, inclusion, and supports in special education, and building and maintaining safer school facilities. So my question to the three of you um, is how are these uh, priorities uh, aligned with what you might work on uh, in the upcoming session? And I will start with, uh, I think, Representative-elect uh, Chapalov Street. So I, I love that uh, Representative like Lowe mentioned the special education um, cap. And it's great to see that 
there are people in both chambers thinking about this um, or both sides of the aisle thinking about this because I know there are a lot of legislators that I talk to um, who are excited to address that cap so that our students who have special needs can have access to funding or but it, the school systems who serve our students with special needs have access to the funding to better serve those students. Um, so that is something that I would definitely sign on and that we already have let I think I believe I've already signed a letter in support of that. And so I expect to see legislation come through um, addressing that. Again, many of these issues come down to where is that revenue going to come from. Um, so as I mentioned in the intro, I'm excited to serve on the finance committee and try and find some different ways that we can produce more revenue um, so that it could go towards education. I also think that there is a lot of common sense um, gun safety laws that we could work across again in a bipartisan manner, manner that have pretty uh, broad support in the public um, to make sure that uh, that our students are safer. Like one of the things that is surprising is that so many gun deaths come from suicide and just making sure that we kept keep our guns safe and locked up would really help um, students and young people either from accidental death accidental death from playing with guns or from preventing suicides with guns. Um, so those are two things that I think could easily be moved forwards in a bipartisan manner. Um, and I'd be excited to work with some of my colleagues across the aisle. On. Thank you. All right, Senator Lech Benke. Yeah, and let me follow up because I forgot to answer your last piece. I'm also, uh, you mentioned the uh, committees that I'm on. I'm on business and financial services. So like Representative Lex Street and welcome, good to see you. Um, I too worry about the finances and what's going on. So I'd love to see some of that legislation come through and how it's uh, gonna be funded is a big piece when you do analysis on that. One of my big priorities also is serving on the Energy and Environment and Technology Committee. So if there's technology that we can leverage as a cybersecurity and was the uh, house kind of technologist for any different types of legislations that we can leverage, then we are a pro-technology state and we should get back to utilizing some of that efforts and a lot of these different solutions. I am gonna be ranking member as a freshman in the Senate on human services. So it does mean a lot to me to possibly have this come through our committee and probably work in some of these areas as well as uh, had a chance and a good opportunity to be on ways and means. So a couple budget areas there as well that we can help support. I agree the bipartisan support is out there. I know I'm a lifetime member of the NRA, I've been a military background. I've been in service for years about protection and service uh, to our nation, but also at the community college, we do a lot of the reaction drills about what's going on in our schools and the different areas of the topics that we can help protect. Our goal is to make sure education is a safe place that students don't need to worry about uh, being protected but do it the right way to have real solutions that we know are gonna impact our communities. We saw what happened in Uvalde. We've seen what happened across our nation. And we all, I think, agree we need to do something about this. We need to make sure we sit down and we can reach across the aisle and help each other out in solving this problem. So thank you. Thank you. All right, Representative Lucht Lowe. Yeah, I think addressing the uh, mental health crisis is extremely important. Um, you know, all students having access, uh, is is definitely top of the list. I think the thing that I've talked about over the over the last uh, eleven months campaigning is you know our students are struggling, but they're not just struggling from eight to three Monday through Friday. They're struggling all the time, and so having resources available on the weekends and in the evenings when when students are are struggling the most when they're away from their peers. And so uh, I think we need to make sure that there's uh, community buy-in and community support uh, and, and more of a 24-7 model, not just for students in school, but as students transition from school into college or into the workforce or wherever they're going. And so, so those young adults too. I mean, obviously the last three years have been tremendously stressful uh, on our young people, uh, tremendous uh, needs in the behavioral mental health, uh, you know, pulling them out of school and and taking them away from their peers. And uh, I think has been very detrimental. And I, I think we're gonna reap the benefits or lack of benefits uh, from that uh, decision uh, for years to come. Uh, 
But I think uh, the other thing is, is, as I talked about earlier, dis, uh, children with disabilities, uh, special needs, special education, uh, that's right there. Uh, I agree with uh, Senator Elect uh, Banky that, uh, you know, we, we need to look at our schools as a safe place. Uh, I know in, in, in Snohomish County, we've had um, some schools pull out school resource officers. I'm concerned about that. Uh, I think uh, we shouldn't be demonizing uh, school resource officers. I think they play a very vital role in, in helping uh, through that situation. Um, and then, you know, one of the things I noticed on priorities is uh, about school facilities. And, and, and I've toured many of our school facilities here uh, locally in my school district uh, with the superintendent. Uh, our superintendent was great about uh, two to three times a year uh, taking us on buses and touring the different schools and seeing it from the superintendent's uh, perspective, getting into the classrooms. And it was open to all the community members. And uh, this was before I was uh, an elected official, just a, a private uh, small business owner in the community. And I, I would go on those trips and, and learn what's going on. Uh, the thing I noticed with that is uh, increasing transparency of the condition of school facilities. I think that's very important, but I think increasing transparency for our parents also. Uh, I think they need to see what's happening in our schools, what's being taught in our schools, and also the condition of our schools. So, uh, so yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of great things in the legislative platform. Thank you. All right, uh, Nancy, questions from the audience. Oh, and you're muted, Nancy. And um, yeah, Senator-elect Banky, the, you'll be answering first. Okay, well, I'm not sure any of them are, are um, that I'm gonna ask them directly as worded, but there have been a couple of questions come up about since you're bringing up um, both school facilities and technology, um, maybe speak to how you see uh, technology in our schools. We know that students have been doing some remote work how we can better integrate remote learning in our schools. Anything you want to address on that? Yeah, thanks, Nancy. Great question. Um, it is big and key to not only mental health that Representative Lex Lowe as well as Representative Lex Street have been mentioning before. It's kind of the all-encompassing atmosphere as we've been locked down and we move into more of our uh, traditional ways of learning, we're still going to have a hybrid opportunities to where, whether it's cyberbullying, uh, online opportunities are there, we need to understand we're protecting our children when we're in these environments. We help focus to help educators, help parents know what's being taught, was what we mentioned before. But I think on that, wearing that hat of, there's a lot of things that are bad about the internet, and we need to understand where those are at and help that limitations that are on there. We've seen from the cyberbullying to the child stalking to we have a internet child task force in the Tri-City area that's leading some of the efforts with the FBI about sex trafficking and things that are going on. Uh, it's a big piece of education and awareness for our parents to understand our children who have the more connections than we've ever had. I read uh, as a professor, one of the data points we've seen is in, we're the, we in the US have more um, internet connection devices down to the eight-year-old level than any other nation in the world. And I don't know if that's a good thing, uh, but the more we're connected, the more we need to understand how powerful that is in the hands of children uh, to protect and to make sure we're focusing on educational opportunities, leveraging these devices in a way that we, so I've served on the um, Digital Equity Task Force for the state of Washington the last three or four years trying to get rural broadband out to our communities. That's number one to get connected. Uh, to can you continue to push that efforts out to the Department of Commerce to uh, have and stand up and help stand up the state broadband office so we can connect our schools, we can connect the remote rural areas of our state. Being from Eastern Washington, we're still seeing some gaps that we need to look out to, and as well as our Native American population, uh, our First Nation tribes and our groups that have talked to us and uh, have been underrepresented. 
we're looking at different technologies like Starlink that we tested with a couple of the Native American tribes in our nation and in our state. And we showcase where we can get a solution to a remote community quick with some limited amount of seed money from the government to allow them the capabilities to go ahead and expand this to get opportunities for everybody. Great question, Nancy. Thank you. Uh, Representative the left low. Yeah, technology is extremely important. Uh, I love the center elect's uh, comments uh, concerning rural broadband. Uh, there's such a divide, even in uh, a, a county like Snohomish County that is very urban, but it's also very rural. And, and we're struggling in, in East Snohomish County with um, rural broadband and broadband access. And I think Star, uh, Starlink is a great uh, resource uh, to use, but you know that, 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 that will help in situations like this. I think the other thing to talk about too is kids know technology. I have five kids and I, I try to do stuff with technology. I think I'm very good at technology, but I am like at a kindergarten level when it comes to my kids. I mean, they can just grab these devices and do stuff quick. Uh, just before this meeting, I spoke at our local Farm Bureau uh, meeting and there was two young kids there and they spent the entire time on their little phones doing games and, and stuff uh, during the entire meeting. And uh, part of me was saddened because we had talked, since it was uh, the Farm Bureau, we were talking about agritourism and getting kids out to the farm and getting their hands on, um, on stuff. And so, so technology is great. And, and my kids, uh, some of my kids have done online learning uh, uh, before the pandemic. And uh, obviously during the pandemic. And, and so that's helpful. Um, but, but they need to also be in that classroom that's not just technology too. And I'll just throw out a quick story, kind of should have answered this at the beginning, but we talked about the PTA when, when my kids started at, at a new school. Um, it was Fredrickson Elementary in Pierce County. And it was the brand new school had just started. And uh, the teacher told me, hey, we're not gonna be able to do school field trips this year because we don't have a PTA program yet. And we're just starting off as a new school. And uh, it was to go and do hands-on learning at you know, one of these local type farm things. And so I asked how much was the uh, field trip for the bus and the driver and everything. And at the time they said $400 and I said, well, let's do it. And, uh, and so I paid that out of pocket uh, because to me, and, and I know to my wife, hands-on is also important too. And so I appreciate our PTAs and, and helping kids uh, with technology, but also helping them get the hands-on field trips and, and getting out. And again, I should answer that at the beginning, but thanks for letting me sneak it in on this question. Thank you. Representative Luck Street. Yeah, I don't think it's going to come as any surprise to anyone that I am a large proponent of technology in schools being that I work in Microsoft and this has been sort of very integral to my life. Um, I love that center elect Banky has been involved in digital equity because that's something that's very near and dear to my heart. I taught um, computer science in a, in a school in South Seattle for six years to make sure that all kids have access to computer science classes. Um, and like from broadband access, whether it be in urban areas or rural areas, like I can't imagine going through life and not having access to the internet and all the things that come along with that. In our district, um, a lot of people struggled with even having devices to to use um, aside from having access to internet. Um, and so making sure that kids are just set up for success because we know that technology is a part of our society and we need to integrate it into education. But I also agree again with Senator Binky again, to make sure that we understand the ramifications of it. And just because we have technology doesn't mean it's an answer to every problem. Um, and we need to understand where it can best be used and best applied. Uh, and so making sure that they have those supports is really important. Um, but then also making sure that tech isn't the only option. I love that Representative Alec Lowe talked about um, pipelines to the trades, because while I love working in technology, everyone else may not necessarily enjoy that as well. And maybe like working with your hands, maybe like a job that can't be easily offshored, uh, making sure that we have those pipelines to the trades, I think is also equally important so that our kids have many different options for careers going forwards. Thank you. 
Nancy will ask the next question and then representative elect Lowe, you'll be answering first. Okay. Um, this is a question more about one of our top five, which is um, building and maintaining safe, safer school facilities. And it's primarily about um, that, that issue is primarily about the facilities themselves, earthquake proof, air quality, um, other environmental hazards. Um, I guess it's just a question on what do you think about that as a priority? Uh, where do you stand on that? And um, would you be willing to support funding some of those uh, opportunities to make our schools safer? So I live in the Lake Stevens School District and uh, I was recently there with our Rotary Club interviewing kids for college scholarships. And uh, I, I given out a college scholarship uh, each year for the last 10 years. Uh, through my Rotary Club. And I showed up on campus like I normally do and I have in the past and uh, I, I parked and then I tried to get in the building and I couldn't. And I realized where I parked, uh, I had to walk around the entire building, uh, you know, 180 uh, degrees away to get into the only entrance to uh, get into the school without, without uh, having a special key card access. And so, um, you know, some schools like Lake Stevens, uh, uh, they, they are right on top of it. Uh, I, I grew up in the Everett School District. I'm a product of the Everett School District. And uh, I went to North Middle School the very first year that it opened in sixth grade, as, as a sixth grader and went there sixth, seventh and eighth grade. And uh, what a modern school that was in 1982. And, and, and being in that school environment, and I can watch my middle school from my office window at the county council at Somish County Council, I can see my middle school and my high school every single day from the office. And over the last two years, they, they tore down the school that was brand new for me in sixth grade and rebuilt a, a new one. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's two stories now and very modern and, and very limited access to get into it and uh, great for the Everett School District. But I represent East Snohomish County and East Skagit County. Uh, in the legislative dis, uh, legislative district 39, and uh, some of the schools in, in my district are, are still in the 1950s, uh, 1950s schools, and you know what's happened is we kind of have the haves and the haves not have nots, and uh, we needed to to really help our rural schools modernize from the 1950s schools and and bring them up to date with the earthquake. Uh, uh, stuff for sure, uh, emergency, uh, emergency uh, stuff that need to be there, but also putting forward, you know, the safety features that can keep those out that shouldn't be there. And I don't think I'm a bad guy as an elected official, but I found out real quick what the security was in my local school district. And I want to make sure all the schools in my um, school districts that I represent have the same access to funding and dollars that some of the uh, powerhouses, for lack of a better word, uh, who have a, have what seems to be better access to money and dollars. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Representative Lutz Street. So this is an area that I'd love to be educated more about. Um, I know that there are large capital. Um, projects in my district that are rebuilding some of our schools. Uh, but as Representative like Lowe mentioned, like seismic preparedness, I think is 100% reasonable and justified and necessary. Like we don't want our schools to collapse. Like we know we are on a fault line, um, especially on the west side of the state, whether you go far north or far south, and we need to make sure that we prepare for disasters that we know our region is susceptible to. Uh, but aside from the seismic preparedness and um, air, air fil filtration to help us keep our school, our kids in school um, with COVID-19, um, I think those are the two things that I am most aware of. But if there are other safety issues with school buildings, that would be something I'm very interested in because our kids are one of our most precious resources and we have to make sure that they're safe when they go to school. Thank you, Senator Lechwinki. Yeah, and I just kind of summarize and echo what the other two uh, fine gentlemen have mentioned. 
uh, structural upgrades to meet the modern uh, technology that we have, the integration with that into city emergency response groups, the uh, air, like you mentioned. Um, I give you the question, I don't know if um, this is dating myself, but uh, I live near Aaron Brockovich when they made in the movie about the bad water in California in the district there. And that when we were in the military and you've probably seen some of the stuff about Camp Lejeune because it's all over the internet and everything else. I got a hundred probably in my inbox today about the water at Camp Lejeune. So any veteran knows uh, water is a big issue too for our schools to make sure we have clean water, clean air, the facilities are up to date, with what we we're talking about and integration with that of technology that can do smart sensors, smart temperatures to save us, to do it with clean energy would be great, as well as securing those environments. Like Representative Elect Lowe said, I was in a similar situation that I had to meet somebody to escort me into the area for a Veterans Day event to speak at uh, of middle school in our area. Uh, and it's the same one I grew up in 25-ish, I won't say how old I am, years ago. Uh, it's been updated, it's been modernized to have the entry and exit points. And as a military officer, you start pushing that together of having this out to have it standardized throughout the, you know, the district and of course across OSPI. So there is a priority of security. We understand this, the parents are involved in that process. And then we together as a group, listen to their community concerns and can get the proper funding to where it needs to be. Appreciate it, thanks. Thank you. All right, Marie, I think you have a question. I did, and I wanted to thank all of you too for joining and recognizing that uh, you're kind of doing popcorn tonight because uh, you're you're you haven't sat on education committees, you're not steeped in uh, all the budgets and and. Uh, but I did. So one, my one question to you, and and it can be kind of quick, but what was the number one thing you heard when you were knocking on doors this year, uh, campaigning for the seat that you? are going to be sworn in on uh, in January. And I don't know where we're starting, Lizzie, so I'll turn that back to you, but just kind of curious. All right, uh, we are starting with Representative Elect Street. Yeah, so the number one issue that I heard at Doors was housing. Um, and I think that plays out in very different ways across the state, but I'd bet you that Representative Lowe and, Re and Senator Banky heard similar things. Um, in my district, it's around affordable housing because the prices of housing in Seattle are skyrocketing. Um, and I was it was very heartening to hear that everyone wants to deal with this in a humane way. Like we don't wanna see people on the streets. Um, however, we want safe um, and clean access to parks. Uh, and we want people to have opportunities to build wealth through first time home buying. We don't want our renters having to spend increasingly exorbitant amounts of their take home pay to just live in the city they want to live in or live close to their jobs because as people get pushed farther out of the city or away from their jobs, they take on extra costs of transportation, wear on their cars, um, effects on our environment. So housing by and far was the number one issue. And that quickly moved into sort of public safety, making sure that um, as we address the housing and homelessness crisis, that we are getting the correct supports for people so that we can have them um, become functioning members of society again um, and take care of our neighbors. Thank you, Senator Benke. And thanks for the question, Marie. Uh, as you know, being in southeastern Washington, we've had an uptick across the state, even if, but in our district, uh, with uh, community safety. Our murder rates are at the highest it's ever been. We've actually had a couple deaths in our local community. And somebody who's grown up in the area, we've never had this in rural communities across our state. Uh, so I'd say probably my number one is community safety and what we're doing about how we can get back to ensuring that we have safe schools, we have safe areas that we can come and go to. I know at one point, I know this is scary, but we used to ride bikes in our neighborhoods, skateboard, just walk up and down sidewalks. I mean, I know that's old school uh, and I know somehow I survived. Uh, we wanna get back to that so that children can go to our parks, be safe and go out and walk your dogs and just be with friends and neighbors again. It's getting back to that core values that we wanna support. And I think that's across the aisle that everybody wants to get together and and try to help where we can and what's going on uh, to make our community safe across the state. So thanks for the question. 
Thank you. And Representative Elect Slow. Yeah, I agree with both of my colleagues. And, uh, you know, this was a, a different election for me. I, I mean, I, I live in Lake Stevens. I've been on the Lake Stevens City Council, uh, won an election that way uh, on the Snohomish County Council. Uh, so I've doorbelled uh, on, on county issues for Snohomish County. Uh, for this election, um, I have a new area, which is East Skagit County. And so I, you know, I just ran an election last year, one with the highest percentage ever in the district, uh, uh, Republican or Democrat. But here I was in a new county, Skagit County, that, that I really didn't know very well. And so I focused my doorbelling efforts, because that's the question about doorbelling, uh, in Cedro Woolley and uh, a city, it's a beautiful city, it's a wonderful city. Uh, I ended up winning every precinct but one in Cedro Woolley. Um, but as I, I knocked on doors, uh, affordable housing taxes, people are being taxed out of their homes, especially our seniors, but public safety over and over and over. And I think I saw a statistic that we're on pace to uh, have 50,000 stolen vehicles in Washington State this year. Uh, you know, that's just an uh, incredible number. I, I think if you said there was 10,000 stolen vehicles, I think we'd all say that's way too many when you're talking 50,000. And so uh, knocking on doors, uh, focused in Cedro Woolley, uh, I would say public safety was, was, was the thing I heard the most. Uh, last year was about transportation because I, I was doorbelling in Snohomish County and in my council district. So, so, those are, so those are the big issues at the doors. Thank you very much. So we are going to um, go ahead and do some closing remarks. And I do invite you to, um, you know, uh, look at our resources on the Washington State PTA website. We have our, and I think Marie also emailed you, but our top five, but we also have also supported issues. Um, and then just to keep in mind that, you know, we are the parent voice here and to, um, you know, we're good, we would, are looking forward to working with all of you uh, during the upcoming session. So I'm going to start with uh, Senator-elect Banky, if you wanna do some closing remarks and then, um, and then we're going to go to then back to you, uh, Representative Elect Lowe, and then uh, Representative Elect uh, Street. Well, thanks, Lizzie. Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Nancy. And thanks to each and every one of you for having us this evening. I know it's quick. It's always this time of year before the holidays. So first off, hope each and every one of you have a safe and healthy holiday season. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. As we continue to work toward uh, prepping for the session, it means a lot to sit out there and listen to you guys. I hope sometimes we can turn this around so we can hear your voice. It means a lot to listen to the parents and understanding the concerns in our communities uh, as we continue to prep for session. I look forward to you and I would say welcome you to my office, but we don't know where our offices are yet. <laughs> we're actually, our Senate offices have been demolished and we're moving into a modular that's actually in the parking lot of the governor's place right north of his mansion. So I would say, once we get that set, feel free to come on out. Um, let us know, my door is always open. Um, my LA is ready and waiting. We'd love to hear your concerns and listen to what's going on. As this continues to move forward, I know the gentleman on here as well. Uh, once they get into the cycle of understanding from committee times to the floor debates, to different things, we always wanna to continue to have touch points and listen to how the different bills, the passage of it, even the budget requests are moving. If this meets the right thing. So we wanna to continue to have a resource like you to continue to have that in our districts and listen to each of our regions. So this means a lot to us now, but continue to stay engaged and help us out throughout this process. So thank you very much. Thank you. Representative Lucklo. Well, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak tonight. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people listening on and we don't all agree on everything but there's a, a majority of things that all of us agree on and it doesn't matter your political stripe or political persuasion. And so um, I look forward to working with my colleagues and, and finding things that we can work on together for the better, betterment of our state, but for the betterment of our students. And, uh, you, know, you know, I already talked about the priorities at the beginning, but, you know, I think one of the things I'd like to see us do is be more inclusive with, with our parents. 
and having parents uh, included in the education of their kids. Uh, I just, I have felt over the last uh, decade or so, it just seems like that gap gets further and further away where uh, parents aren't is included in their kids' education. I don't know if it's the parents. I, I doubt that. I think it's more some of the school districts or whatever pushing away. And so just having that full complete family unit where everybody's working together and, it, and that might help with some of the mental health and behavioral health needs that, that we have too when parents can be informed on those things. So uh, informing parents, uh, include parents, uh, making sure parents are included in education decisions, I think are all, are, are all good things and winning things. And uh, again, I hope to work together with, with my colleagues on things which we can all agree on putting the students first and making sure that their educational needs are met fully funded. Thank you. And Representative Luck Street. Yeah, I really appreciate each of you taking your time out of your evening to come speak to us because the more I find that I listen, the more that I learn. Um, like we talked about some school safety issues in terms of buildings and um, natural disasters. That was not something that was previously on my radar. And so even something as fundamental as education that we spend a lot of time talking with people about, there's always options or uh, options for us to learn more. And then the other thing that I really like is that this is uh, an organization that brings in viewpoints from across the state. Uh, and often we know what our districts need, um, but making sure that we can balance that with the needs of the state because we are st passing statewide policy. and we have a very diverse state and we have to make sure that we do the best for all of our kids because th that is what we want. Like these are our kids, we want all kids to succeed. Um, so I really do appreciate everyone's time. And as Senator Elect Bank Banky said, we are coming up on the holidays, like spending time with friends and family and having great food is something that just brings more life to me. And I'm so glad that we go into session after the holidays, after we've all had time to recharge. And so I really encourage you guys to do the same with their families and wish everyone happy holidays. Thank you. And I just wanted to thank uh, Representative Lick Street, Senator Elect Banky, and Representative Lick Lowe for your time tonight to share with us and so that we can uh, get to know more about the three of you. And so thank you to our membership uh, for staying uh, tuned in. And I know that it's been kind of a long evening, but we hope that you uh, learned something and got some questions answered. And, um, and again, thank you everybody for your time. And I wish everybody a safe holidays. And with that, I am going to say good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all.